We can go for it there. together. <laughs> Thanks, <bud. laughs> So as you heard through the introduction, I'm Ken Martin. I'm from Marine Professional Firefighters. Um, our endorsement's a little bit different than the IJ because ours focuses down into firefighters. Okay, I mean that's what it comes down to. It comes down to firefighters and labor, where they the IJ needs a much bigger, bigger uh, preview of you. We're looking we're looking more towards labor. So, um, like the IJ, when we when we endorse in a race, we invite everybody in to to interview. We don't pick if we have a a Mill Valley race. We're not just going to bring in Max. We're going to bring in anybody who's running. So, um, if we are endorsing in your race. We will, and we, you will get an interview request from us. We'll send it. Um, our interview request form is very simple. Um, it asks a couple questions of you, or it asks a couple things of you. It explains our process, tells you that we might endorse a candidate. Sometimes we will endorse two candidates in a race. Um, we may choose to stay neutral till a later date, or we may divorce. We may endorse, endorse, endorse. <laughs> we may defer until the general election if it's a seat that's going to involve a runoff. Um, we ask that you bring a copy of your fundraising up to date, a list of your um, endorsements, your biography, and a short half a page on why you're going to, why you're the best candidate for the race. We want, we want to get a little bit to know about you. Only questionnaire that goes out is a very simple information sheet. We want to know who's your, what's your, obviously your name, your, what you're looking for, your, your cell phone number, your email address. Um, and then we want to know staff people. Who's your campaign manager? Do you have a campaign manager? Who's your, who's your treasurer? Who's your key contacts? Do you have an FPPC number? Um, all those things that you've, you've heard about before. Um, and then we're going to start asking, this next year we'll start asking for your social, your social media accounts. Um, and we do that because as we're, as we're interviewing you, somebody's going to be sitting there scrubbing your accounts. We're going to be looking at your Twitter account. We're going to be looking at your Facebook account. We're going to be looking at your Instagram accounts. We're going to find out if the stuff that you're talking about and you're telling us is what we see out there in, in, in the, you know, the, the world of electronics. Um, so we don't hand out questions in advance because we want to know if you're going to be studied on the, on the subject matter. Um, if, you, if you walk in and don't really know anything about firefighting, you're probably going to have some problems with some of the questions. Um, if you don't know some of the political issues that are going on with regards to firefighting, you're probably going to struggle with some of the questions. Um, last year I sat up here and read, read a bunch of questions. I'm not going to do that this year. But um, those are the things that you need to understand. When you come in for the interview, don't come in in your, in your shorts and tank top and flip-flops, okay? Dress professionally. And that's not just for us. I mean, I'm talking about when you go into the IJ. I mean, no matter where you go, okay, you're going in to sell yourself. Recognize you're a candidate now. You're going in to sell yourself. And when you're going to come in and ask, for us to spend, to give you our name, to spend $5,000 on you, um, and you're there to present yourself in a pair of, pair of flip-flops and tank top, probably not going to be your best day. All right? So think about your attire. Be timely. Be there when you're supposed to. We will be running late. I will tell you right now, we will be running late, okay? Because uh, like you've heard some people talk about, I mean, some of the stuff that, that happens... We could get someone out of the door during one interview until they actually sang the song they wrote for us, okay? And singing the song, and again, this goes back to the issues that, that address firefighters. Singing the song that you wrote for us, I don't care. I, I mean, I, I know I sound like an ass, and I'm sorry, but I don't care. That doesn't, I got someone standing out there who's been sitting out there for 20 minutes so you can sing a song. It's not right. You're not being, you're not thinking about the other people. So be timely and be prepared. Um, we're going to want to know, much like you just heard about, why you're running, uh, what do you know about us, why we should endorse you, and then again, what are you going to want from us? What's your fundraising plan? Um, the difference where the Marine professional firefighters come, and you've heard some of it from, from some of your other speakers, 
is that when we endorse, we endorse, we're all in. Um, I'm able to show up with anywhere from 10 to 50 walkers to deliver those pieces of mail for you, the, the, those door hangers. Um, I believe a door hanger is the most important. I, a one on one touch at the one to one, person to person is the most important. I agree with that. But from there, I think it's a door hanger. And the reason I'm big on door hangers is because, and, and Dottie hit it on the nail, man, you collect your mail, you walk into the kitchen, you're standing next to the garbage can, you hit the thing that opens it up, and you go, huh, oh, and Ken Martin's running. Huh, yeah, well, well, okay. When I put it on your door, I get about another four to five seconds of your attention. And that's all I'm going to get. I mean, that's, that's what my value is, okay? But what I bring with my endorsement is I bring those walkers who put that piece of mail on your door. Pat talked about getting to, you know, are they going to endorse you? I don't let my firefighters talk to anybody, okay? I can tell you that when we endorse, when we walk, we hang something on the door, all right? Um, and I think Brad will, Brad will speak to this. When you're in a profession, well, I mean, all of you understand it. When you're in a profession, you speak a language of that profession. And if I get a firefighter out there and someone says, well, why should I endorse this? And they start talking like a firefighter, I'm probably not going to secure their vote. All right? um, <laughs> when, we did the, when we did the Sausalito annexation into Southern Marin Fire, we sat the city, the city manager of Sausalito down. He didn't understand why I wouldn't let people talk. And we went through a conversation, two firefighters going through a conversation about the value of the annexation. And when we got done, turned to the city manager and said, now why don't you just tell me what we said? And I didn't have to worry about anybody talking to anyone anymore. Okay, we just, we talk different, okay? When we, get, when we go to a house that's on fire, we went on a call or we got a job. I mean, if I tell you, well, you might go on a call. Well, you picked up your phone. People don't understand it. So um, I don't let us talk. We just, we do it. Um, I have access to a full print shop, the California Professional Firefighters does full printing. Um, it does, takes care of the mail piece, takes care of the door hanger, uh, takes care of my walk list, takes care of everything I need. Takes, I've got people who've worked in the um, industry for 20, 30 years who will do my messaging. Um, and so we bring those two, we bring those tools with us when we, when we do an endorsement. Um, Dottie had talked about, and I'm not trying to take any, we don't, we're not campaign consultants, let me just say that. Um, just so that some of you get an idea of what you're in store for. Um, I'm looking at a tax measure up in the town of Arcata. Arcata is nowhere, Bill, right? Ta tax measure, tax measure up there, three touches, mini website, and boosting up their, their social media. They're looking $30,000. Okay, you're talking 7,000 voter. That's the universe, 7,000 voters. We're looking at $30,000 for that tax measure. Okay, and we're polling, it's 64%. We know that we need 66 plus. We've got a margin of error of 12%. We think we can capture it. We're going forward, we're, they're gonna spend the $30,000, but that's, a, that's, that's what you can expect. Supervisor, you're looking probably 200, you know, 100, 100 just to get you through the primary. 200 on in, Novato City Council, you're looking, oh boy, it's somewhere around 10, you know, to get in a really non heavily contested fight in Novato. So if you come into my, into our interview and you don't have your FPPC number, you don't have a treasurer, you don't have the fundraising plan set up, I already know you don't stand a chance. So take the, inf the all that is to take the information that you're getting here from all these people Talk to them afterwards. There's a lot of information that's being delivered out here that's really important for you. Talk to these ladies. They know what they're doing and put that plan together because otherwise when you come in to talk to my team, you're going to lose our endorsement. Not saying you'll lose the race. You're going to lose our endorsement. I'll keep it just, I'll try to keep it that short. Any questions? Yes, sir. I both of you mentioned one of the things that you look for is other people's endorsements and the candidates bring that. And I was curious, I was under the impression that when you go to speak to somebody, 
they would be making an independent decision based on what they think uh, by what you're presenting, your positions and your views. I'm not sure why it matters so much what other people think since you're making your own independent judgment. I, it's not that I, it's not who's endorsing them, it's that they have the endorsements, okay? They've, they've been out doing the job, they've been getting, talking to the people and they're getting those endorsements. And it's more, it, that's more important to me. I, I don't care if they have Brad's endorsement. Brad doesn't care if they have my endorsement. I'm speaking for him, but I know he doesn't care if they have my endorsement. You know? it, that's not, that is not our concern. It's the fact that a person comes in, unfortunately I'm a firefighter, and I'm gonna steal a little bit of Brad's time, but I'm at a meeting the other day and I met someone. They're running, they've decided they're going to run for a national office, okay? Because the person who's in the office right now doesn't support women's rights, okay? The person who's in the office is probably one of the strongest advocates in California on women's rights, but this person has determined they don't. And they're talking to me about their campaign and getting it going and stuff. Absolutely no endorsements. They've got this one idea, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but you haven't gotten anybody else to come along. Nobody else is on the train. And that's, you, you know, it goes back, it's just like the fundraising. If you don't already have your fundraising place in place and you need $10,000 to win your race, you ain't gonna get it. It's not gonna happen, so. Um, what, what, what we're looking for is um, who in the community you have backing from. And some, let's say you're running for city council. Uh, we'd like to know whether you've got the support of any uh, council members that we've previously endorsed or that we previously opposed sort of gives us the temperature of where you stand so you, you know it's an independent decision like I said we've endorsed people that we don't agree with for instance like uh, Pat Eklund uh, time and time again we have differed her with her on some of the issues but time and time again her, the people challenging her uh, just haven't been as strong as she is on, on a lot of the issues. So uh, basically we, we make our decision based on her knowledge, her expertise, on the issues that we will agree on rather than uh, focusing on what we don't. And the other issue is we have endorsed people who don't stand a chance, um, mainly because we've agreed with that candidate on the issues. Um, and another difference is we don't, you're not gonna get any money out of the IJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, we don't make uh, political donations. Uh, I guess most people say the newspaper's endorsement is like worth five, five percent, ten percent. Used to be like that the, the, uh, the IJ's endorsement was worth five percent, the Pacific Sun's endorsement was worth four to five percent. Uh, but, uh, like I said, we're basically the only game in town, uh, which isn't, I mean, I, I used to take comfort in that the Pacific Sun was also making endorsements, that the, that the Novato Advance was making endorsements, uh, uh, but uh, because of the changes in the newspaper business, uh, they don't have the... Uh, um, I guess the bandwidth to be able to go through that process any longer. Okay.